Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. You're worthy of glory, Father. You're worthy of honor. We celebrate you in the beauty of your holiness. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify your name. You're worthy, O oh God, of glory. The heavens are filled with your glory. Thank you, Father, for your counsel that is breaking forth into this new day. Thank you for your eternal intentions manifesting in seasons and times like this. Honor and glory to you, Lamb of God. Praise wait for you in Zion. We've come to the place of your dwelling. Show yourself strong once again in our midst. Reveal your glory. Let your word once again be manifest to us in a new way, in a new light, in a new direction. Let there be an unveiling, O oh God, of your eternal counsel. Let your intentions once again be revealed to us. Father, we seek the direction of your spirit. We long for the ways of your speaking. We anticipate for your voice once again to break forth into our space. Spirit of God, let there be an unveiling of the revelation of Christ once again in the earth. As you usher us into a new day, we come, Lord, with a childlike faith. We surrender and we submit to the voice of this new day. We ask that you would teach us the pathway, the ways, how to engage in the things that you are saying, that you are speaking. Your demand for our life in this hour is what we cry out for. For this is why we exist as a platform to pick into your heart and mind and to distill that, yes, into the lives of your church, the ecclesia. I thank you. As the rain of your spirit continue to fall upon our dryness, our dry land, I pray, Father, that there will be a, a moisturing of Yes, the soil. That when we receive the seed of your word, your word indeed will germinate and bring forth on this good ground. We present ourselves, Lord, as a ground willing and ready to receive the seed of this new day. Father, we prepare, O oh God, our hearts, our life as a womb to receive the spammer of your word for this glorious day. Inject into us, impart into us, imprint into us your prophetic demand. Grant us once again to grow in Christ that we may come into the spirit of wisdom. Christ, our wisdom. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that there will be an emerging of a new order of men and women. There will be an emerging of a new order uh, of an apostolic people. A people who have a standing before you. A priestly order. Father, this is the day that you're leading us forward. And therefore, the priesthood has changed. We receive the garment of this new day, this new priesthood, this heavenly order of a life well represented, oh God, in every dimension, in every expression of human life. 
Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the spirit of Enoch. For the grace of Enos to stand and call upon the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the unveiling of the sevenfold nature of your character within our spirit man as we grow into the fullness of Christ that every life, oh God, that you have ordained for us for each department of life, oh God, will become visible. It is my prayer, oh God, this morning that we will not just be another kind of humans living on earth, but we will be that which you have ordained, oh God, from time. Ah, Father, that our life will begin to unfold, manifest your glory and your pleasure in the earth. That wherever we are, oh God, that our life indeed will reflect what is called the manifestation of the knowledge of God. Yes, Lord. That whenever we come and gather and speak your heart like this, we are filling the earth with the knowledge of your glory. Yes. That is our prayer. This is my prayer this morning. That our voice will become the extension of the manifestation of your glory. Let your glory fill the earth. Fill our space. The knowledge. Let there be an awakening. Open the eyes of the nations. Open the eyes of your church. Open the eyes of homes, family, communities, cities. Yes, to the things that your spirit is revealing in this new day. Help us to shift from infancy. Help us to move away from the dimension of toddlers in the things of your spirit. Help us to move away from ignorance. Help us to move away from frivolous attitude, false mindsets, false belief. Deliver us, O oh God, from childishness. Bring us into a new day of spiritual maturity. We want to be a mature church. A mature church, oh God. A mature ecclesia. Maturity is what you are waiting for. You said until your church comes to the fullness of Christ. Help us, Father, to grow. May this word continue to grow us. May we make demand upon ourselves until we see growth in every faculty. Within every dimension of our existence. Spirit, soul, and body. We rise, O oh God, into Christ. Let Christ be formed in us. Let Christ be formed in us. Let Christ be formed through us. Let Christ be revealed in us. Let the life of Christ saturate every dimension of our existence. Our oh, Father, we pray. Growth is what we ask for. In this new day, Father. Growth is what we seek for. We don't want to go in a state of immaturity. Deliver us, O oh God, from hastiness, hasty spirit. We embrace, O oh God, a day of strength, a day of a foundation that is well built upon Christ, the rock. You are our rock, the rock of this age and the rock of the age to come. You've been our rock in the past. You are the rock of all ages. So we thank you. For your grace. We are secure. In your word. We are secure. In your ways. We are secure in your desire. In your intention. We honor you God. We bless your name. We glorify you. Come Lord. Have your way. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Touch our lips. Let us speak with the tongue of the learned. Touch our eyes. Help us to see beyond the curvatures of, of time and seasons. Help us to see what is beyond the minds of men. Help us to see what is beyond the bend. Help us to see straight. No matter how narrow. How zigzag. 
how challenging, how difficult, how complex. Help us to see through, oh God. Give us the eyes of the spirit to know what you demand of us in times like this. And to yield, to surrender to your demand. Spirit of God, I thank you. I honor you. Your word is spirit and life, Jesus. You are the very word of life. You are the very word of truth. You are truth. We declare that the, 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 the boss stops with you. Nothing else can be before you. Nothing else can be ahead of you. Nothing else has ever been outside of you. We honor you. We praise you. Open our eyes to see the reality. To see the activity within our wilderness. Open our eyes to see the activity around our loneliness. To see the activity, the spiritual activity. While we are laying, oh God, on a hard stone in a place called nowhere. Help us to see that we are never alone. Help us to know that you are always with us. As you are with Jacob, even though he was with a nature that is still frivolous, that is still with that which is known as a supplanter, yet you engaged him, O oh God. This is the confidence we have, O oh God, that we are not alone, even when we are disappointed of ourselves, even when we feel, yes, unfit, unworthy unprepared, immature that you are not disengaged from us. Ha. Thank you, Lord. If you could speak to Jacob and show him the pattern of the life ahead of him, we receive your word because we know you are speaking to us. We receive your word because we know that you are speaking to us. We receive your word because we know that you're speaking to us. Your word will not return to you void. Your word will not return to you empty. Your word is able to do much more than we can ever think or hope for. Uh, your word is able to do in me much more than I, I can ever imagine, think or reason. Your word has the power to transform. Your word has the energy to shift, to change from one form to the next. Yes, your word is life. Your word is light. We know that everything is made out of light. Your word is light. You are the energy. Science is born in you. You are the expression of science. You are the one that allow men to discover what they call science. We honor you. We praise you, Lamb of God. We celebrate you, King of glory. In our life, have your way. Take your place. Thank you, Father, for the richness of truth. Thank you, Father, for the richness of of faith. Thank you, Father, for the richness of hope. Thank you, Lord, that you're taking us beyond a day of infancy. Thank you, Father, that you're bringing us to the day of your Son, Christ. We have become indeed a reflection of the Spirit of Christ. It's called sonship. We cannot reflect sonship if Christ is not formed in us. So we thank you that this day, oh God, Christ is being formed in us. We appreciate the things that you are speaking to us, the things that you are demanding, the things that you are saying, the things that you are speaking. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Worthy are you, Lamb of God. Be glorified. Be magnified. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Honor and glory to you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Father. Glory and praise to you. 
Oh, hallelujah. Cabra nosa. Thank you, Lord. 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 Life is changing. Things are changing around us. Things have never been the same. There's a constancy in change. There's a constancy in change. Uh, every day we are being changed. There is a movement leading us to the place of your ordained desire. We are on a journey. On a journey with Christ. As you said to Father Abraham, walk with me and be mature. Father, this day we declare that we walk with you. And we're growing in that walk. And our walk is redefining our sphere. Our walk with you is redefining our space. Our walk with you is redefining, is shaping, oh God. Yes, Father, our proximity. We thank you. We are not the same again. We cannot be the same. Yesterday is past. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new way. It's a new season. New opportunity. New topography. New environment. New perception. New understanding. New knowledge. New information. Yes, Father, that we have been reformed into a new man. It's a day of a new man. The old man, the old man and his old ways are gone. It's a day of the man from above. A day of the man from above. That which is of the earth is earthy. No wonder we speak and talk like men of the earth. But Lord, as we journey into your mountain, into the hill, as we come up higher, as you said to Moses, while he was on the hill, you said, come up higher. You, you took him into the nymphos, into the cloud. Father, we are being elevated into the place of your dwelling. We are becoming indeed your true representative on earth. And we thank you, God, that this day, oh God, is shaping who we are. is transforming our understanding. And we are becoming more like you. And so we glorify you. We praise you. We will never be the same again. That when men look at us, they will see a new form of humans. That when people engage us, they will engage a new dimension of men and women on earth. Carriers of the heavenly life. Carriers of the very nature of Christ. Carriers of the very glory of God. Yes, if any man be in Christ is a new creation. Thank you Lord that this glorious day is revealing, yes, that dimension of the heavenly life, of the, of the heavenly order. We are indeed of a new creation. We thank you. The righteousness, right standing with you. Is giving us a posture, an authority, and a grace to speak in the earth. We bless your name, O oh God. For this is who we are, and this is what we declare. This is our prayer, that we be no more. As Enoch walked with you, and he was no more, that we will walk with you. Until men will no longer know us the way they, they used to know us. Help us to walk with you until a day that men will not be able to engage us in the old way they used to engage us. This is the day of the second man, the last Adam. This is the day, ah, this is the day of the second man, a second man, second nature, the last Adam. We thank you. Is our prayer. That we become a reflection of the man from above. A man who knows all things because the man is found in you. We honor you, O oh God. We glorify you for these things that you're revealing. Yes, it's a day of redefinition. We are coming into your eternal blueprint. We want to be that generation that comes into all of the things that you have desired and designed for mankind. We want to be what, yes, the first man could not be. We want to reflect and reveal what the second man, the last Adam, came to restore. Father, help us, O oh God, to become one in Christ and with Christ. We thank you. 
honor and glory. Praise to you, O God. Thank you, Lord. Touch every dimension of my life. Let my words and my action become one. Let my words and my thoughts become one. The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Yes, be acceptable. In your sight. It's your sight that defines our validation. It is who we are before you that defines if indeed we are successful or we are failed. Not what men think, not what men say. And so we thank you this morning. And once again, we push ourselves further in the reality of your expectation for our life. Your kingdom come. We are the generation building upon the very foundation of Christ. Being shaped in the framework of his spirit. We have nothing to do with what men have built an image as their standard. We shift away, we break away from the identities of men. We break away from the values of the world. We declare that we are the standard of this generation because it is us that you have sent out to go and reflect you. So we thank you this day. Come Lord Jesus. Have your way. Be glorified. I want to welcome everyone this morning that have made it to join me this morning. Of course, you know most time that when we come online, it's always impromptu. What I mean by that is, it's always done by the leading of the Spirit, done by the you know, prompting of the Spirit. Of course, we have a time frame where we meet most time in the mornings, but most time when you know, we come, we come because there's something the Spirit of God is tearing. There's something that the Lord, amen, will have us know, amen. There's something the Spirit of God will have us walk in, understand, and of course, continually, you know, project. Heaven is speaking expressly to his church in this new day. And uh, it's a privilege, amen, to, to, to re-echo, if you will, that which the Lord is, is emphasizing. We are in a day of apostolic strategy, and we've explained several times what that means. Of course, we are still... You know, uh, looking at the book of Acts of the Apostle, which of course is a framework, amen, of what God is doing in the earth. And we thank God that the Lord was able to direct our heart to go back to that study and continually look into, amen, his, his, his blueprints, his direction, his values, his standards. Amen. The church is built with people and on people. And the Lord has been speaking to us. So we, we're still in Acts chapter 7. We're going to be moving to chapter 8. But, you know, a few days ago, the Lord began to steer my heart towards something a bit different. Uh, but, of course, everything connects. You see, the things God is doing in our, in our day are all interconnected. But the frequency it may, may be different. The emphasis may be different, but they are all streaming into one order of life. The order of, amen, restoration. The order of reformation, amen. We're coming into that point, into that place where we can become complete in Christ, amen. That position of completion gives us, you know, a voice in the earth. When I'm in completion, I'm talking about, you know, having that clear spiritual posture, position, amen, of the of the of the of the resources that get, heaven has given to us vis-a-vis -vis, amen the sevenfold spirit of christ amen the giftings amen and of course amen the value standard that will allow us to effectively amen become the spiritual structure man is a spiritual structure in the earth hallelujah that's why in the beginning when you know god created man he created him amen to do what amen to keep the earth to subdue the earth amen Yes, to be in charge of the earth. And that pattern, that ministry has not changed. Amen. Today God is doing with the church what amen, he began with the first man. Christ came to restore that which the first man failed amen, to do. He showed us the pattern. Three and a half years, he lived a life. Amen. 
He showed us how to live life, what to you know, focus on, the objective of life. He, he redefined to us what life is all about, amen. What marriage, what home, amen. What it means to be a father, mother, brother, sister, amen. What it means to grow up, amen. What it means to submit. What it means to be part of a community, amen, of a people called the people of God. Christ came to restore, amen, what uh, uh, the first man abdicated and of course what the devil, you know, tried to take away from, you know, from, from man, all right? So, so the kingdom, amen, is no longer with the devil, amen. Authority is no longer with the devil. Authority has been restored back to the church. But of course this church uh, has, has, has not fully grown or mature to understand, amen, how to utilize all the resources that the Lord, amen, has left uh, the church is still groping in all kinds of things and uh, you know the church is caught up in all kinds of uh, ideas and God knows what and the reason for that of course is clear because amen we're dealing with uh, 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 you know our deformed fallen nature that concept of our redemption is still a bit uh, uh, not clear to many of us we're still struggling with you know all kinds of you know deformity and 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 disconnection in terms of you know our humanity and spirituality all right so so there's so many things the lord amen is is awakening a people amen within his house his, his leaders his elders amen to you know to restore back so that we will not continue on the path, amen, that seems as if, yes, we, we're breaking through, we, we, we're building something. But when, when they look into our life, amen, when they look at the real reality of what we, what we represent, that thing becomes like, is nothing. So this is a day, amen, of re-engagement. The Lord is speaking to us. The Lord is, you know, uh, uh, you know bringing us to a point, to a place where we have you know clarity there must be clarity we looked at the scripture the last time i was here i think two, two days ago we, we read uh, uh, first corinthians chapter 13 you know verse 11 where paul said when i was a child and and we're gonna look at that again because god is severing us amen from childish childish ways childish things god is bringing us out of amen a life of infancy there's nothing wrong in being a child, but if we remain a child, it means that we are we are we are we are we are we are not working within amen the the, the, the spiritual system. In, in fact, we are not working amen, in line with the universal universal principle of life. Amen. Anything that, that is born of God lives, it grows. Anything that is created, amen, can grow can develop, amen, and in fact, they are de designed to develop. So, if you look at the church, amen, uh, uh, in terms of where we are today from where, amen, the, 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 the church was born, you know, some, you know, uh, 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 you know, four centuries ago, they're about, if you look at where we are today, you ask yourself, we're supposed to have passed this stage, we're supposed to have advanced this stage, amen. Yes, after a while, when you give birth to a child, if that child is not growing, if that child is not developing, amen, and of, of, of course, I'm sure you understand that development speaks, amen, into, amen, you know, uh, uh, the physique, amen, the biology, you know, speaks into, amen, uh, the, the, the sense of, you know, uh, uh, um, the mental, you know, a uh, uh, part, all right? Uh, uh, growth speaks into every area of life. You have to grow mentally, physically, emotionally, all right, you have to grow, of course, spiritually. So if, if you're just growing in one area and the other areas is not, you're not seeing growth, then you should, you should be worried. And I'm sure the Lord is worried. If the, the Lord is not worried, amen, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have brought us into a time, amen, of reset in 2020. And to me, that is an important path, amen. The world can never be the same again. In 2020, amen, a major landmark, amen, took place. On earth, hallelujah, there was a major, a major, you know, you know, uh, uh, if you will, you know, shift in terms of how we, we engage life, how we look at ourselves, how we evaluate life, amen. In 2020, something happened. Regardless of the interpretation, you know, we want to give or people are giving, we need to all agree that something happened to us. And not just to us, to the entire earth, to the point that, Many of our friends, family, loved ones today are dead because of what took place in 2020. 
We're not talking about how it happened, all right? We're not talking about where the coronavirus came from. We, it, it, the coronavirus to me is just a Trojan horse, if you will. Whenever God wants to move in the earth, God will always look for a means. He will always look for an occasion. So we, let's not be fixative on the occasion. Let's see the bigger picture. All right? That if the Lord had not allowed what happened, amen, to happen, we won't be where we are today. So <laughs> the Bible says, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called after his purpose. So if you love the Lord and you're, you're called after the purpose of God, when things happen, amen, within your life, within your environment, you should be looking at, amen, what God is doing, what God is saying. All right? In most cases, we tend to be focused, amen, on the negativity, on what was taken from us, on the discomfort. And that, amen, itself becomes what the enemy uses, amen, to stop us, to keep us from learning the lessons or, you know, getting the right information that, amen, has been passed across to us. And I think, amen, that we need to, amen, rehearse regularly the things that happened in 2020 2020 was a, a major landmark amen in 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 the definition amen of humanity in 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 the things that defines hallelujah how we see life how we look at life and we need to amen believe the lord to help us amen to adjust our life continually based you see you have to regularly pinch yourself and say hey something happened to us you know, we, we, we came out, amen, of a Sabbath, all right? That's how we looked at it. And the aftermath, amen, of what happened in 2020 is still very much felt all across the earth. So it's not over. God gave us a word in 2020, all right? He said, I'm giving you 10 good years, all right, to prepare for the next phase, to prepare for... We don't know the next thing that is going to happen, all right? I'm not that kind of a prophet that will tell you, well, the next thing, this is what is going to... But we know one thing, amen? God is moving everything to us, the finish. God is moving everything to us, amen, the finish. We're coming to us, the perfection of all things, amen. Coming to us, the end of all things, amen, brings the coming of Christ nearer to us, hallelujah. The more earth moves to us, amen, that position, that prophetic de demand, that prophetic, amen, uh, 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 remember that the earth is walking to us, a, a position, amen, of the fulfillment of, of, of God's, you know, uh, agenda. God has a program for earth. Everything God has done or is doing right now, amen, are all moving to us, amen, a place of the finalization, amen, of creation. We will never, amen, live life amen, from a position of just, well, all right, uh, we're just living. No, every, you like it or not, you, you, you submit to it or refuse amen, to accept, amen, you agree or disagree, it doesn't matter. Everything is moving towards the finalization of all things. The earth, amen, is changing. And the earth will continue to change, amen, to us, amen, that point, to us, that place where that final trumpet will be sound. The Bible says, amen, at the, at the, at the, at the sound of the final, final trumpet, that trumpet is a dimension of a proclamation, of a sound, amen, in the earth, revealing, amen, the, 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 the fullness of time. Yes. So, there's a message that God, amen, is, is given to the church. There's a proclamation. There's a declaration. There is, amen, a sound across the earth, that, across the earth, excuse me, that is moving us, that is leading us to us, amen, the fullness, the finishing of all things. That understanding allow us, amen, to continually do what? Adjust ourselves, rearrange our life yield to the demand of the Lord. Let's not make amen, the foolish mistake that they made in the past by saying, well, all things have been the same since the day the father fell asleep. The spirit of the father, the things that God steered in the hearts of the patriarch that allowed them to live life in certain way, that allowed them to engage the earth in certain condition, in certain, you know, perspective, amen, is still very much alive in us because that dimension of life, amen, was sourced from Christ. And as, the, as we in, interact with the spirit of Christ in us, we will pick the prophetic demand, the prophetic, amen, intention of God for each, each moment, each you know, seasons of our life. We will pick, amen, the directions of God. There will be a steering. 
And that's why it's important that we continually interact, amen, with our spirit. Christ, the spirit of Christ lives within our, of course, within our spirit. As we pray, as we seek the heart of God, as we continually, amen, yield in obedience to what the Lord is saying, there will be, amen, a clearer and a more amplification of his demand for the earth. And as we move and, 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 you know, live our life towards what the Spirit of God is saying, guess what? We are bringing the prophetic mandate of God, amen, to a closure. Amen. Listen to this. Listen to this. A people in the earth, the Bible says in the book of Peter, amen, that we should do everything, amen, to bring the closure of the earth, amen, faster, to bring the end of the world, amen, uh, uh, faster. In other words, a kind of a lifestyle, a dimension of thinking and belief system, amen. How we live life, amen, relating to that which the Father desire, amen, as we continue to live life, amen, based on the divine order and pattern that God wants, amen, his people. That order of life, amen, accelerates, amen, the activity, the prophetic counsels of God, amen, the administrations of God in the earth. And that, of course, we saw through the life of several people, e.g., amen, Noah, Enoch, amen, uh, uh, Moses, all of the life of these men and women that, that lived in, the, in time past, amen, uh, uh, reflect a dimension of, you see, there's something that God wants to see in every generation, and as God continually walk with us and each man at every generation is able to locate the mind of God and, and reflect that, that order of life, whatever God, amen, wants to do, amen, whatever is in the heart of God, amen, in eternity past gets closer. That is how the kingdom of God, when we say the kingdom of God is coming near us, the kingdom of God responds to a quality of life, a dimension of people in the earth. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God respond. When we say we, we pray the kingdom of God, that is not just some prayer we pray and then everybody go do their own thing. No. When we pray may your kingdom come, the kingdom of God is going to come and begin to manifest. The spirit of Christ will come and manifest a kind of a life, amen, that allow people, amen, to live in, in certain dimension of, of values, culture, belief system that that brings heaven down. The kingdom of God coming down is actually heaven coming into the space of man. The more we do that, the more, amen, I yield my life in prayer. I pray, but I go out there and begin to manifest the things that I've declared. The more I show love, the more, hallelujah, I refuse to be moved by the negativities of man. The more, amen, I, I yield myself, amen, to be beaten. The more I, 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 I stand still, amen, even when I'm being persecuted like we saw regarding in the life of Stephen, we looked at that. That even in his in his towards his death, hallelujah, in him being persecuted, he said nothing. Hallelujah. He said, I see Christ standing. The more Stephen lived that life, the more the values of God. Listen, the values of God for that season was not to save Stephen out of that persecution, was not to deliver him, was not to take him away. Amen. For those of us who have the idea of rapture, well, rapture means amen, uh, uh, God taking us away before amen, persecution comes. Some people have that the, you know, theory and theology and they have scripture to back that. And some people believe that, well, rapture means that in the midst of tribulation, amen, we will be what? We will be taken. We will be, we'll be, uh, we'll be raptured. Some of them believe all right, that well, we will go through the persecution all right, and then Christ comes. All right? So you have the post-rapture, mid, mid, you know, mid-rapture, amen, uh, uh, pre-rapture, you know, mid-rapture, and post-rapture. Whatever your theology, that's not the, 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 the issue this morning. That's not what, you know, I am focusing. What I'm focusing on is that in the sovereignty of God, because what we are looking at, amen, is the strategy. The apostolic strategy to engage, amen, the current move of God. So wherever we are, whatever we, you know, is, is happening to us. Excuse me. Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, it is important that we have this understanding, all right, that the sovereign nature of God the speakings of God for our life, amen, supersedes our expectation. So, 
in the day of Stephen, the Lord in his sovereign wisdom, amen, allowed Stephen, amen, to go through the things that he went through. And all God did was to, all, all God did was to, to reveal to Stephen that he was with him. It's not that he came down. Remember, in the day of Daniel, when they were also, when they also found themselves in the same situation that Stephen found himself, amen, when the image of Nebuchadnezzar, you know, stand still and Daniel was, Daniel and his brethren, amen, were demanded to compromise and they said they were not going to compromise. Guess what? There was a challenge. There was a persecution. Hallelujah. And they said, no, we're not going to give in. They threw them in the fire. But guess what? The Lord appeared in the fire. In terms of Stephen, the Lord did not appear in the fire. He only opened the eyes of Stephen to see his position on his behalf. The Bible says the Lord was standing. And Stephen saw, amen, the Lord standing. And that was enough for Stephen. That was enough for Stephen, amen, to go through what he needed to go through. So that the, the Lord can have himself a glory. So that, amen, the intentions of God, the desires of God, amen, for the Lord can be manifest. So what, whatever way the Lord, des, you know, desired, amen, to, to turn up over in our life, <laughs> that is what we need. We don't need to focus, amen, on a particular theological, in a way, such that when the Lord doesn't meet that, you know, the theology, amen, we get disappointed. I'm talking about, amen, strategy that will allow us to reflect Amen. The prophetic voice of God for our day. So that we are not what? Amen. We don't become that generation that failed God in their, in their time. No, we want to be a generation that pleased God. We want to be that generation, amen, that carried out all the intentions of God. We want to be that generation like, you know, like, like, you know, like David who served his generation. Serving our generation requires that we have, amen, a clear prophetic insight regarding the demand of God for our time. The question that I've been asking us, you know, in the past two, three days now is, do we know where we are right now? Do we know where God is, amen, in our life, in our day? <laughs> Can we relate to the voice of God, to the speakings of God, amen, to the requirement of God? What is the Lord demanding, amen, for us in this new day? What is God pointing to? What is the spirit of the Lord, amen, requiring of you? What is God asking you to come out of as you move towards that next dimension of maturity we have a responsibility amen to fulfill to feel full to carry out god's prophetic amen mandate for this hour we need to understand what that prophetic mandate is we need to yield ourselves we need to become that right amen vessel hallelujah that heaven can pour Amen. He, he, their intention into. We need to be able to amen, carry out what God desired to see and fulfill in this 21st century. That whatever God amen, is, 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 is demanding or is looking and is, is seeking, hallelujah, to manifest in America, amen, in, in, in Ghana, somewhere in, in, in Chile, hallelujah, in Brazil or maybe in Swaziland, whatever God is desiring to see manifest within the realms and the regions of the earth we should be that company of men and women who can say we are the conduit we are the potter to manifest to show the demand of God what is God saying over the atmosphere of Nigeria not just what God is 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 you know has said in the past or what God did in the past what is the spirit what is the demand of God every realm across the earth has amen listen to this has amen a prophetic voice over them every realm every every dimension of 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 regions in the earth amen has right now over them amen a prophetic voice of God now it takes a prophetic people it takes a people who have been sighted who have been awakened amen to tap into amen the voice of God over their realm amen and begin to release that into the spiritual into the natural human realm and that can only happen amen when we have wise master builders when we amen align ourselves amen to the demand to the required standard of God amen regarding that prophetic demand and that that will only happen when we begin to build in a accordance to that which is called amen a kingdom pattern 
kingdom pattern amen are built through what is what through what is called a wise master builders who are apostles who are apostles apostles amen are representative amen of christ within the realm within their geographical region within amen an atmosphere apostles are those hallelujah who can see into amen the blueprint of god for their nation apostles amen are those who can see amen deep into the intentions of god hallelujah for their geographical location apostles are those Hallelujah. Who can see through the design of God? Like I said, God has a desire, a defined agenda for every region. So he places churches, amen, in every realm, hallelujah, to do what? To carry out his intention. The reason why church exists, amen, is to bring forth, is to birth, is to, listen, the Bible talks about the woman in the, Rev, in the book of Revelation who is pregnant. If you are pregnant, you must give birth. What do you give birth to? That child that that woman is pregnant with, hallelujah, is the intentions of God, is the prophetic counsel of God, hallelujah, for that realm. So we must be pregnant, amen, with the intentions of God, with the prophetic counsels of God, with the prophetic demand of God. But that cannot happen just like, amen, babies. Listen to this. Just like babies cannot be pregnant. And when you have amen, a, a infants, getting pregnant you know there's something something is wrong infants amen infants that are you know that are getting pregnant it tells you that something is wrong all right even if that, like we see today here in south africa and of course in in in, in the west you know you begin to find 12 years old amen 14 years old giving birth these are these are these are these are these are you know ab abnorm ab you know abnormal situation because they are not mature enough they are not developed enough even though they can they can receive pregnancy because all right they enjoy or if, in fact let me not say they enjoy they enjoy the pleasure of sex no in most cases amen is either they were forced upon amen or you know out of you know curiosity or out of amen dysfunctionality amen they go into the acts and and if they receive a seed amen guess what their 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 body is not even mature enough hallelujah to understand how to take care of the seed this is relating to the kind of church that we are seeing today we have churches we have people amen going into the things of god that are still infants not mature not developed amen in terms of how they think hallelujah how they reason how they speak we read that scripture i'm gonna read it again paul said when i was a child when I was a child, I reasoned as one, amen. I thought as one, amen. I spoke as one. Look at that. I was thinking about this just before I came to, you know, to broadcast. You know, what, what is it that a child reasoned about? What is it that a child speaks? What, 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 what goes on in the, in the mind, in the imagination of a child? All right? The, the child will most time will think about food. <laughs> the, the child will talk, you know, will, will think about, you know, acceptance. You know, the child will think of, you know, a, 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 you know, uh, uh, security. You know? The child wants to be secure. All right. The child wants, you know, to be sustained. All right. The child wants to be protected. The, the child wants to have a lot of fun. When you take this thing away from the child, you've killed the child. But you see, these are the very thing today that amen, we are what we are projecting as a church. No wonder the things of God are being held back. No wonder the things of God cannot come to the fold. No wonder the things of God cannot move further beyond. Hallelujah. Our in, in fact, the moment you begin to take a child, amen out of a comfort zone, out of his or her comfort zone, you begin to project, your, you know, uh, 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 say something that is difficult for the child to comprehend. The child, amen, become resistance. The child becomes very resistant. And, and, and if, you, if you're not careful, the child might even become rebellious because you, you, you're saying something that the child cannot relate to. Doesn't that sound like, amen, what is going on today in the church? That God now is, is demanding that we grow. God is demanding, and you know, you know, you know, like I know, that if you want a child that has grown to a certain level and that child is not growing or is not behaving in a particular way, what do you do? You start to, amen, enforce. You start, you know, discipline. You start, you know, putting, as a parent, you start saying, no, no, this is the way I want this thing to be. You can no longer, you know, be with your, your your device at eight o'clock you've got to shut it down you know you, you start saying no you you have to pray you have to study your bible you have to study your book all right yeah, this is how you must eat your food amen you can't be eating and be talking you you start instilling certain you know discipline hebrews 12 
He whom the Father loves, he chastised. And it seems as if, amen, out, as God brings us out, amen, of our child, childish attitude, childhood attitude, amen, infancy thought pattern. And as it begins to demand from us in this new day of the 21st century, of course, and today we are in the you know, 20, you know, 21st year, where, uh, 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 God is demanding that, hey, now you can no longer do certain things. You can no longer talk in certain way. You can no longer have your own way. And guess what? Many of us, amen, are rebelling. Many of us are fighting. Many of us are, you know, are showing all kinds of attitude. And God is saying, no, I'm no longer going to allow that because I want you to what? To come of age. I want you to grow. I want you to develop. Hallelujah. But listen, as long as you live a child within that environment of security, within that environment of provision, within that environment of fun, the child is fine. But God is saying, no. You've got to leave this season. You've got to come to the next season. You've got to come to the next dimension of my intention for you. You have to begin to see what amen, I am preparing for you. There's a reason why you leave. There's a reason why Christ died on the cross. There's a reason why the blood was shed. There's a reason why you were, you were, you were, you, you, you were given all this grace. There's a reason why all of these things amen, that you have were given to you. you we, now the Lord is beginning to show us and tell us hallelujah, some very important uh, amen, points. But uh, we don't want to listen. But we have to. Why? Because... Those things that the Lord is pointing us to right now is what will help us to shift away from being childish. When I was a child, a child becomes very hasty. Hastiness is one of the things the Lord is telling us he doesn't want in our life again. At least that's something that has been emphasized to me. God says, I don't, I don't want a man hastiness. You know, a child thinks of something now and suddenly the child wants it. The child can, can, can be playing, amen, and can be pooping, amen, and can be doing everything at the same time. You know, that's a child for you. Uh, and God says, no, you, you, you have to come out of this idea of I want it now and I can get it. No, you need to grow. You need to develop. You need to mature. And those are very painful process. Why? Because we have to bring the things of God to the finish. We have to bring the things of God, amen, to the finish. Whatever that is, the finish does not necessarily mean the end of the age or maybe the end of the world. But whatever, amen, heaven has ordained for us, everything that we have been assigned has a time frame. And that's why we keep saying that, amen, purpose is progressive. You can use, amen, all your life. To, to, you know, to, to engage one thing. While well, there are seven things they want you to carry out. All right? You've spent you know, the, the first 20 years of your life trying to lay a foundation. And then you're going to spend another 20 years you know, looking for blocks. So when are you beginning, amen? When are you going to begin to utilize what you have built to carry out? Remember, there's a season of building and there's a season of utilization. I was sharing with my dear sister Tina. David yielded himself to the principle of divine training. When God is training us and building us and trying to empower us, in most cases, he doesn't even tell us why he's doing what he's doing. He doesn't give us the full picture of why amen, certain things have been demanded, certain things have been required. All right? When God begins to wake you 3 a.m. and God knows you know the time to pray, when God starts asking you to do certain things, in most cases, amen, you, we, we just see that as, oh God, this thing is challenging. But, but we don't get the full picture of why. David was never trained, if you will, to be a military, you know, warrior. David was not being trained, amen, to be a fighter of nations, of course. David was never trained to be a, a killer of, of, of giants. 
But David knew how to protect, how to guide what has been committed into his hand. He's been faithful by watching his father's sheep. David never knew that fighting and watching and keeping his father's sheep being, 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 being protective of what has been kept under his care will one day earn him amen, a position of one who can fight and kill what an entire army amen, we're running from. Think about that. It must, listen to this. When God is training you, in most cases, that training does not look like what you need in life. God trains us. Listen to this. Listen to this. God trains us in the area of attitude. Not just in, not just in the area of skill. He trains up. Listen. When we are well trained in the area of attitude, in the area of character, in the area of faithfulness, in the area of commitment, in the area, hallelujah, of, you know, of protection. In most cases, those training are translated into skill. Have you noticed that there are people who are highly skilled? But, they are, but most of them, amen, have very bad attitude. And they end up failing in life. They've got skill. But you see, skill may open a door for you. But skill is not going to maintain that door open. It's your attitude. It's your belief, amen. It's your character, amen. It's, it's your response to life. It's your pers you know, pers perceptions are there. And the way you engage people that allow you to maintain that door open. So it's important that we understand that all the things that the Lord, am I saying skill is not important? Skill is very important. After all, the Bible says, amen, this great skillful man came to David. David himself was a skillful man, amen. He was, he was, you know, he, he was, he was skillful, amen, in, 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 in playing, you know, uh, 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 you know, his harp. He was skillful, amen, in, you know, in, in, in throwing, hallelujah, his sling. He was skillful, amen, in so many things. But those things, we will not relate them, amen, to the way God used them. That's the point that I'm making. God has a way, amen. Of making one who is available to his spirit. God has a way of using one, amen, who is committed, amen, to his values, to his principle, amen. God has a way of using such people to do great things in areas we will think they are less skilled. So what are you talking about? Well, I've got a scripture for that. Let's quickly look at the scripture. Oh, Hallelujah. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter one. For the message of the cross, verse uh, verse uh, eighteen. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. Remember, it's not just say saved; it's a being saved. It's a continual thing. We're being saved from our suke. We are being saved, amen, from the soul life, from the fallen Adamic nature. It is the power of God. The cross is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the skillful people. The intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Hallelujah. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in their wisdom, for since, amen, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through its own wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. You see, this is very powerful a scripture. God uses what the world terms as foolish to show, to reveal. That's what God did through the life of David by defeating Goliath. 
the strategy that we are seeking to enter, to understand in this season, to conquer the Goliath, the mighty you know, uh, uh, image, the 60 foot image of Nebuchadnezzar, the high towering mountains of this world. I hope you understand. The Bible talk about amen, the mountain of God amen, becoming established among other mountains. As we become established among other wisdom of this world, we need to have clear, deep understanding of the wisdom of God. The chief understanding, amen, of the ministry of the apostolic is in their ability to build the intentions of God. Is their ability to, to produce, to bring forth and whenever the wisdom of God manifests within the human realm, he makes, it makes foolish the wisdoms of men. Whenever God, hallelujah, turns up and means what men celebrate, it dwells what men celebrate and it makes their work, hallelujah, like nothing. So if what we are proclaiming and we're declaring is not showing, is not manifesting, is not bringing. You see, when, when, when the apostles decided that, okay, we are going to allow the wisdom of God to, to help us build a, a, you know, a, a system that will put to an end this conflict in Acts chapter 6. What, what happened? We saw a rapid growth. We saw a rapid increase. The Bible says, amen, and, and many were converted. Guess what? Even the Jewish priest, and that is what led, amen, to the persecution of Stephen. Friends, there is something the Lord is impressing upon our hearts in this season. But we have to turn away. Like Moses, like I said the last time, we have to turn away from our sense of present security. There has to be something in us desiring more of God. There has to be a quest in us seeking the ways of God, the mind of God, the will of God. There has to be a yearning beyond, hallelujah, the ship of Jethro. Because God will always come to speak to us, amen, within that which we have come to find security. There has to be something longing. There has to be a burning in our heart beyond a temporal, hallelujah, pleasure, security. Or else we are not going to move to the next dimension. What am I saying? We have to keep our hearts set on a journey. While we are in Babylon, while we are in Egypt, wherever we may find ourselves, let us remember who we are, what God, amen, is doing in our life. What God is doing in our life, in most cases, may feel disconnected to what God will have us become or, what, or wherever God, amen, is leading us. But as, as long as we continually, amen, Engage with this environment of interacting with God. God has a way of leading us and pointing us to the next thing he wants us to carry out for him. Life is not just about purpose. Life is about the life of God in us. Leading us to us. Yes, the purposes of God. It's not the other way around. We have to find joy in the environment Amen. That God has placed us, regardless of how, amen, the outside wall may look or feel. We have to have a desire, a passion, a longing to find rest in Him. And that means that we have to shift away from childish things. We have to move away, amen. From, children don't have strategies. A child knows nothing, amen, about uh, planning for tomorrow. Our plans for tomorrow must be a nest within the voice of God for today. 
We have to yield to what the Spirit of God is saying to us. We have to surrender, hallelujah, to the demand of God today. His voice must be clear to us. As we hear the voice of God, we shift and we change direction. Hallelujah. The more we hear, the more we respond to what the Lord amen, is saying, the more we are able to find peace and rest for our soul. I want to encourage you this morning as I bring this time of exaltation to a roundup. Keep your heart your mind intact. Particularly in the environment of God's written word and the spoken word of God. Keep creating a sense of renewal. Keep creating a sense, amen, of anticipation. Keep creating, hallelujah, a look of faith within your spirit. Keep hope alive. Keep praying the things that is still in the minds of men. Keep praying them into manifestation. Let the word guide you. Let the word lead you. Let the word direct your steps. Let the word instruct you. Let the word, hallelujah, become that which sustains your movement. Let the word of God be your finality. Father, we thank you for a new day, a new day, a new order, a new life, a new position. We are steering things even in this season of apostolic engagement. Thank you for the ways of your spirit. Thank you, Father, for the guide, guiding light of your heart. Thank you, Father, for the things that you are demanding. Indeed, we yield, we surrender, we follow. We ask you via your spirit to continually speak to us in a way and a manner that we're able to turn. Once the Lord spoke, twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. That all power, all authority belongs to Him. Father, we thank you, O God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Therefore, be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Keep your lamps burning. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Keep your lamps burning. Keep fueling that lamp. Don't let your light be snuffed out. Don't be carried away by activity that makes you forget what matters. Be dressed prepared. Because we don't know the time, we don't know the hour when we will be needed to bring a change, to bring an answer, to bring a solution to a complex problem. It's not when you are needed that you're running around and say, Well, I don't have enough oil. Well, no, no, it's too late. It's too late. Keep preparing yourself. Keep preparing yourself like a woman being prepared for, amen, the coming of the bridegroom. You don't wait for the bridegroom to come before you start looking for your dress. No, you get yourself ready. This is God's voice and God's word to us in this season. Let's not say, well, it is four months before the harvest. Let's have the prophetic eyes to see into the field. Let's have the understanding that when war comes, we are ready to engage in battle. Are you ready? Are you fit 
are you fit for that which is about to come? Are you fit for that which may happen tomorrow? You see, don't get yourself in a state of well, well. Oh, and God is preparing me for ministry. Ministry is a life that you live continually as you behold the face of God. The more you behold the face of God, the more he shows you his desire. And as he shows you, if he asks you to carry it out, then you carry it out. But ministry first is having a standing before the Lord. Ministry is not just what we do. It is who we are. It's our state of being, not our state of action. Action that is mixed with the prophetic voice of God is important. But action without having a posture before God is no ministry. God is changing the topography. He's, he's redesigning the landscape of what life and ministry is all about. The prophetic is bringing us closer, amen, to the new ways of the voice of God, of the mind of God for our day. And we have to surrender and yield. So thank you everyone this afternoon. We're still morning, few minutes to afternoon for joining. Thank you, Sister Tina, for joining, for connecting. Like I said, our, ours is to bring the voice of God to you. Ours is to bring the heart of God to you. So be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning like men waiting for the master to return from a wedding banquet. The attitude of waiting, the attitude of preparing, preparing the attitude of a watchman is required. Let's not be defeated by time. We're living beyond the 10 years plan. We're going to continue to wait on the Lord. And the day we are sent, we should be ready to engage. Thank you. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.